Second question is from Heather Ledesma in the comments. And, and this is another one that's kind of, I think, aimed for you, Edgar, because I know you mentioned bringing people out. But uh, uh, yeah, so she said, my question is, how were you able to bring other members out? I get a lot of people asking me how they can get their loved ones out. And I'm curious how you were able to do it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So, you know, I can give like an exact, I know I answered her, her uh, comment, her question on the, on the comment section. I'm going to kind of give the same answer, but I just want to mention that there's no like, no uh, solid way or a, a, a way that works a hundred percent to get someone right. out. At the end of the day, you know, it comes down to the individual and, you know, God's providence. But I would say that one thing that helps me out a lot is, you know, just first seeing like, do they really want to know who God is? Or do they think, are they the kind of people that feel that they know everything, that they have all the knowledge in the world and they cannot be taught anything? You know, it's very hard to get across to someone like that because like speaking to a brick wall, they, they have to value God and truth over everything, even be be a, be wanting to even risk it all in order to know that they're they have the true god that they have the true gospel and you know people like that will listen even if it's not pleasant at first but they will listen and uh you know second of all you know you, you got to do a lot of prayer you know I, I pray a lot for all the people that you know that i talk to and hope that god opens their their hearts and their minds you know to the message and then also you have to be willing to listen to them, you know, hear them out. Also, we don't want to come across as, you know, I know it all and, and I'm always right and you're always wrong. No, my thing is let the Bible do the talking. Right? God's word is, is the ultimate authority and, and it's what helps us. It's what helped me. And then, you know, the last thing is we have to be ready to take answers, even to those tough questions. And, you know, obviously it's not easy. Sometimes you're going to get put on the, on the spot, but it's not supposed to be easy. You know, uh, we, that's why as Christians, we have to realize how blessed we are, you know, having the scriptures in totality, you know, as to where you look at, you know, the early church 2000 years ago, you know, they were carrying around one letter, two letters, and, you know, struggling to get them across churches, being persecuted, being put to death, you know, and God blessed us with having the, the whole, you know, Bible. And so we, we should not take that lightly, but we should, we should study it, you know, and in the Bible has all the answers. And so that would be my suggestion of what I found has worked for me so far. Okay. And so that was another question from Rachel Smith, who in the comments asked a similar question. That's a question I get a lot. That is probably the hardest question to answer because like you were saying, there really isn't like a one size fits all um, answer to that. And there's not one method that's going to work every time. And, and unfortunately, I think the, the reality is the unfortunate reality is there's really not a whole lot you can do except for be patient and um, talk to them when the opportunities present themselves in, in a, you know, a compassionate, a respectful, humble way. Um, and yeah, and, and I think in many cases, it takes time, it takes years. And that's very unfortunate. Um, I think trying to point them, hopefully to, to get them to watch videos or, or some something that would stir up questions that would just kind of start a, a process of questions um, in their minds, I think would be be good as well. Uh, I, Kelsey, did you have any thoughts too? on that? Yes. Yeah. Um, one thing, because I get that question so many times, um, but I think also like another good thing um, to, to help them kind of like realize because i mean cognitive dissonance is a very it's it's a real thing within high demand groups and that's where cognitive dissonance is where like you can show them 101 like you know pr 101 different types of evidence that you know this this group isn't who they say they are or their teachings aren't as accurate as they as they claim to be um but the cognitive dissonance like it it has it pushes something in their mind that they can't see 
the evidence for what it is. And so, um, so sometimes presenting them facts like, or sending them, you know, all this material, um, mm -hmm. about like the, you know, what former members or what, you know, people like theologians say about the doctrine. And so, um, one thing that I found that says pretty helpful is to remind the person about their life before the church, the things that they like to do. So if you have like a son yeah. or daughter, um, or like a family, just a general family member in the church, you know, remind them of the things that they like to do. If they like to go hiking before the church, take them on a hike, you know, um, just, just them reminding them of what they like to do before plants in their mind, like, Oh, I enjoyed this. I want to do more of this, but, and, and, you know, it can, it, that can spark their wanting to leave as well. And I wanted to yeah. like, I know, I know Steve Hassan is a controversial figure in the World Mission Society, Church of God. The church trashes his name, but he is a legitimate cult expert like Rick Ross and um, John Jalalik, you know, all those people. But we should have him on sometime. Yeah, we should. But his book, this book, Combating Cult Mind Control, this one is it has so many tips on what to do to try to help your family members leave. So, uh, you know, I really recommend, you know, checking this book out and checking, even if you don't read the whole book, at least read the chapters about, um, you know, helping people leave because it's this, it, it's, it's been pretty helpful from the people that I've talked to who have been able to successfully get their family members out of the, um, out of not only the World Mission Society Church of God, but um, other high demand groups as well.